Right, so I've just had to have some new tyres put onto this fan. Um, I realised after taking a taking a closer look at the tyres that um, these ones here they have been on since 2013. Well, the 2013 is when they were made, so they're going on for nine years. And once they're off, you can see that they're in pretty bad condition now. I don't know how long they would have lasted, but at nine years old and this. Now the thing that I find interesting is these I think were the original tyres fitted to the van and they had snow tyres, so I don't know what British Gas is doing fitting snow tyres to their fleets, unless that's standard for them so that they're good all year round. But um, these are snow tyres. Uh, it's a shame that they're in such bad condition because I could have saved them for other stuff, but I might keep the best one and try and find a spare rim for the van uh, so that I've got some, got a spare wheel if I can get the bracket for underneath it but there we go so new tyres unfortunately it's adding up and adding up building the camper but these are a matter of safety so I had to get them had to get them upgraded and it's actually much quieter now as well they're much less road noise um, much smoother drive right so I am starting my first my first long distance journey where I'm going to have to use a rapid charger so we're heading up to Meridian Park in Leicester so um, we're just gonna see how that goes it's my first time using a rapid um, I've used the AC 43 kilowatt hour plugged on the G Wiz, but it only ever pulled five kilowatts anyway so yeah this is my first experience heading to a heading to a rapid charger and actually using it for its use so we're going to head to an instavolt and see how see how the journey goes and um, my experience right let's go you can hear that noise I don't know if you can hear it You might get a bit of vibration off of that phone mount there. I've got 
27 miles left on the range estimate and I've been averaging around 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour and we've got 33% left on the dial so not doing too bad. I am definitely going to need to visit that rapid charger so fingers crossed that is free but I've been doing an average of about 58 miles an hour um, the most I've done is around 60 so it's, it's not doing too bad to be honest right, so here we are we just come off the motorway Yeah, it's not connecting. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I think I know what I might have done, actually. I left the car turned on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have an old NV200E. Yeah. And it, is, it likes to be in car. Fully, fully um, key out and everything. Ah, uh, that yeah, might yeah. have been it. Yeah, I'll try that again. Yes, yeah. It's alright. There's, there's always problems. Sorry? I said there's always problems, but at least it's reading your card. Well, Instavolt I heard was a better one, though, so... These are nice, are these? Yeah. When they work. Right, cheers. It's alright. Yeah, that did it that time. Brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right, so we had a small amount of problems you could see from the video just a moment ago. I was, um, well, two of my cards are not working because one of them 
was deactivated and the other one I need to put into a cash point first in order to use the wireless. But, um, so I had to use my Barclays instead, which is my personal one. So I'll have to transfer the business transaction over. That's not a problem. So, and then I had trouble trying to get the shadow mode to work. So what I realized that I hadn't done is turn the car off and thankfully as you can see at the end we had some help from a friendly driver next door and uh, there we go we are in and let's just go and have a look at the stats on the uh, charge point all right and as you can see we are putting in 31 kilowatts 32 surprised it's not pushing in 40 but we'll see um, miles added approximately 52. Oh, there we go, there it's going up. And there's the unit price per kilowatt hour. So um, I'm just going to sit in the car and wait for this to charge up to about 80. Right, so as you can see, we are getting, well, we're rapid charging, but what I've noticed is that I don't know what happened there, but the health of the battery pack, and this is because of the cold weather overnight, I don't know, but it is at 86. 0.47 from the 87 point something before I mean it's not terrible um, it's not terrible you can see the you can see the voltage going up as it rapid charges and um, and you can see the temperature of the battery packs here 17.5 so the temperatures of hope the temperatures are okay um, but yeah so I was just checking lease by because I was curious to see what was going on with this and um, it's not too bad not too bad that's the temp sensors voltage difference while charging isn't terrible either so yeah so this is just a bit of curiosity just to see what it's doing in leaf spy all right so there we go we have added only cost me five pounds 64 we've added about 41 miles it does that instead of kilowatts and it's down right down to 27.81 kilowatts now someone needs to jump in so as I'm at 87 percent I'm gonna pull off and we're gonna head off Do we just pull it out if we're done? But there we go. You can see the wattage. So we've got 11.49 kilowatt hours we've actually put in. And yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. Apart from those couple of hiccups, we're up to 88%, we've got 73 miles on the gun. So that wasn't a bad experience, the only thing I forgot to do was turn the car off and then I had to flash the card in front of the payment terminal in order to get the charge to start, but that's not bad. I haven't spent too long here, maybe half an hour, a bit longer, and we have enough charge to carry on with our journey. So yeah, that's the first experience, and <laughs> to be honest, this is the first time I've had to pay properly for a charge point. I've always gone to the Tesco chargers before and um yeah so anyway i've got to shoot because i think people are waiting to jump in and we're gonna head off right second attempt at a fast rapid charge this is on the journey home so let's see if this osprey one decides to work Help if I open the bonnet, the charge flap instead of the bonnet.
right, that wasn't too bad. That started up no problem. There's a strange noise coming out. Um, I don't know if it's the, I don't think it's the compressor pump. It sounds like the fans. I'm not sure. But on the cooling system side of it, there's a strange, there's a strange sound. So we'll, we'll take a little look at that. So as you can see, there's a strange sound coming from somewhere. I don't think it was those fans. Hmm. It might be the compressor for the aircon, but I don't remember it making that kind of sound either before. Hmm. Oh well, we'll have to maybe get that looked at at some point. Alright, so let's see if I can disconnect this. We're at 87% with 65 miles showing on the gun. This has actually done okay. We've got 24 miles to go home. Um, it's not been a terrible journey with the rapid charger. It's been quite relaxing. So I'm going to go and take this off and see if I can figure it out. The menu doesn't show me the option to scan my card in order to disconnect. So we'll see how this one works. Right, so here it is. We've taken 10.8 kilowatt hours, we're at 88%. I just have to stop that. And there we go. And let's have a little look at this. So we have 10.86 kilowatt hours energy charged. Um, total amount 532. So we spent about 10 pounds doing this journey, which is about nine hour, 90 miles, or going on for 100 miles. So I guess that's not, that's not too bad, but I'm not used to spending that kind of, I'm not used to spending that kind of money on the, <laughs> on charging. When I'm going long distance and I'm not in a hurry, I'll probably still use the Tesco free chargers and um, make the use of the 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger on board. So I'll only have to park up for a couple of hours, have a rest, have a relax and then carry on. But no, that's all in. Shut that and we're good to go. So yeah, maybe that's what I will make the most of when I am on the road traveling. Um, I'll still be able to travel for free. I'm just, for quick journeys though, um, well, for quick journeys where I'm just going around locally and I need a quick charge to get there and back so that I'm not waiting too long, this works. So let's start up. But yeah, 88, 88%. And I've only been parked up for a short while. Brilliant. Okay, let's go home. Right, so we've just hit the 60 mile an hour limit. Uh, just probably better slot back in behind a lorry because we're coming off in 1.6 miles. But um, I was just testing it doing 67, 67 to 70 miles an hour on the way back to see how it affected the mileage and the average came down to around three miles per kilowatt hour from about 3.56 or maybe was it 3.8 earlier um, so yeah it, it has made it has made a bit of a difference now um, on my reading here 40 so we're looking at 56 miles we're looking at 56 miles hang on wait for this sat nav yeah, we're looking for we're looking at about 56 miles, 57 miles on the range, which uh, wasn't which isn't bad actually, considering I think I've lost maybe 10 miles max by doing 70 miles an hour, which I won't be doing most of the time. I just thought I'm going back going back home from Leicester, and um, I just wanted to see how much it impacted the uh, distance, and it's, it's it's okay, it's okay. Right, I think we're coming off in a moment. Um, let's see. But yeah, no, so that's 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 not bad for short journeys going back and forth, and um, like say nipping to Milton Keynes, going to Leicester, all that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't seem to perform too badly at 17. Then there's a roundabout. So first exit. Yeah, so there we go. It, it, 
wouldn't want to do it all the time because I'm a bit of a I like to get as much range as I possibly can whilst driving at reasonable speeds. So I probably won't rarely go over above 60 miles an hour. In about 400 yards, there is a roundabout. Take the first exit. And, uh, but yeah, so there we go, there we go. Going back home, we're nearly there, and uh, my first experience is on rapid chargers. So overall, it's been it's been a pleasant experience. I had a bit of a trip up at the start the because I completely forgot to um, turn the car off when I put the shadow mill on, so it didn't actually accept the charge. And there's that strange humming noise whenever the rapid charging is going, but from looking at some information, I heard a similar noise on a leaf, and I think it's the water pump, maybe. Um, I don't know if that's something to worry about, but it does seem to be working. So I don't think I don't think there's anything to worry about in particular. But I'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's been it's been a good journey. It's been a pleasant journey. Much easier than on the uh, G Wiz when I had to do that journey before. I had to park at the Sainsbury's for a couple of hours, um, and I was on the motorway doing 45 mile an hour on average. Oh gosh, look at that diesel! I'm glad I've got the um, glad I've got the uh, air circulation on the inside. <laughs> I don't want to smell that. But yeah, so it has been it has been a pleasant experience. Um, I mean, eventually I do want to upgrade to the 40 kilowatt hour battery just so I can get a bit more range and not worry too much about trying to extend the range. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So there we go, guys. Just a sh just a short video of my experience today with my first rapid charger and I'll update you on any future progress and for now take care and I hope you enjoyed the watch.